Hey Weather Warriors, in this video I'm going to give you your 4th of July outlook. We're going to track this every few hours from the 3rd of July through the 4th of July. I'm going to talk about key storm systems to watch, temperatures, humidity, and much, much more for you guys. Now before we begin, I invite you to subscribe below if you like detailed, educational weather forecast breakdowns. And also comment below, have you ever had a crazy storm happen on 4th of July? Comment below and we'll get right into it here. So. What we're looking at here is the upper level jet. We're going to start off here on the 3rd of July at 7 p.m. So some people are planning on the 3rd because it's on the weekend and a lot of activities. We've got a, a little uh, bear, a little uh, jet streak up here in southwest Canada out into the southwest portions of the United States. This river of air up in the upper levels and the jet stream is going to deliver cooler than average temperatures in the northwest and stormy conditions across the northern half, you know, a third of the United States. There's also some northwest flow out here in the northeast we're going to have to watch out for. A little system here in the southeastern United States as well and then some flow going off the mountains we're going to have to watch. So we'll watch those in our next few frames here and as you can see on 7 p.m. here this is what we're looking at here is the future radar essentially our precipitation rates we're also looking at our highs and lows pressures the black lines are our pressure lines our isobars and the red lines are kind of our average temperature in the atmosphere lines okay so the higher the numbers the warmer the temperatures and you can see that the warmest air is obviously in the southwestern United States as we head towards 7 p.m. here on the third you can see that flow off the mountains, deep easterlies getting fed into the mountains. And because of that, I think Colorado down to New Mexico and parts of Texas and down into New Mexico or in Mexico and then also Arizona, that's going to put you under the gun for obviously your, your typical mountain afternoon and evening showers. Okay, so we're going to have a decent pattern set up on the third and the fourth for rainy activity, but mostly during peak heating when the sun's at the highest portion in the sky into the early evening. So hopefully for some folks it will clear up by the nighttime, but that is an area you want to watch. Popcorn, thunderstorm activities, and even some complexes potentially starting to develop in the southeastern United States. That northwest flow that I was talking about, there's going to be a little low pressure system hanging out in the northeastern United States that will deliver a chance for some showers and thunderstorms in the northeast on the third and also along that northwest flows that wave starts to come in there could be some showers that develop in montana but that could be a big difference on the fourth and i'll go over that in a second and as you can see these temperature gradients really cut off so a lot cooler up in the northwestern united states now temperature wise here's our temperatures across the united states you see this area where here right where that northwest flow kind of lines up or that southwest flow lines up you can see temperature is kind of cooler 70s 80s and then way up into the far northwest of the united states 50s in some areas 60s in the northern parts of washington the southwestern united states into the central plains really out to about louisiana mississippi going to be very very warm in this area you got some ridging starting to develop and temperatures could be in the 90s and potentially even 100 plus in Texas. So going to be warm in that area for your 4th of July. Northern Plains, pretty warm, 80s, 90s, but typical for this time of year. In the northeastern United States on the 3rd, we're still on the 3rd, uh, you're, you're seeing temperatures in the 60s and maybe even 70s, but that northwest flow will cool things down just a little bit in that area in the southeast checking in at the 80s and 90s so kind of typical for that region as well here's your relative humidity this is measuring the moisture at the surface essentially so you overlay that with the temperatures and if you have moist air and warm air that's going to increase your heat indices and you're going to have very very warm temperatures are going to feel warmer than average so you can see the moisture is 40 plus 40 percent plus for the east half of the united states very dry in the southwestern united states so a dry heat down there moist up here in the northwestern United States and then uh, humid uh, yeah very humid in the, uh, the northeastern United States your heat indices will probably be the worst here in the central plains but overall not too bad not terribly bad across the United States but could feel like 90s and maybe even upper 90s in the in the Midwest central plains as we head towards the fourth now this is the, the morning of the fourth 
you know, right around sunrise, you can see this northwest, the southwest flow really starts to kick in now. And it does move into the northern plains, but you can see this ridging start to really dominate across much of the, the U.S. A little bit of flow here in the southwestern United States. That northwest flow continues in the northeastern United States in the morning on the 4th. Now, this is the surface theta E. This is kind of measuring the moisture and instability, the buoyancy in the atmosphere, and it kind of helps us find fronts. You can see that on the morning of the 4th here, there's a frontal system right there, probably from a dying or progressing MCS, so a complex of storms that developed out here in Montana. That's going to move east. That will set up a frontal system in the northern plains, particularly the Dakotas, that could set up another batch of thunderstorms in that region on the 4th later in the day. This is this is the morning. You can see that there is a, a frontal system here as well in Texas, but lots of moisture and instability north of that thing. I think that that moisture is going to plow to the east into those mountainous regions and set up another chance for some uh, thunderstorms in the mountainous regions on the 4th. A little uh, Theta E ridge here in the southeastern United States. Typically, you'll get thunderstorms to develop along that ridge. So I would, uh, I'm predicting more storms to develop in the southeastern United States from south of Tennessee or so into really all the southeastern United States north of Florida on the 4th. So we could see another storm uh, develop there. Less instability and moisture up here in the northeast that would uh, reduce the chances of thunderstorms as we get towards the 4th. Now here... Again, this is around 6 a.m. This is how the precipitation looks. That gradient still from uh, the west coast to about the mountains. So the, the biggest temperature contrast would be in the northwestern United States. That MCS that I was talking about screeching across the Dakotas, some leftover showers and storms in Oklahoma, and also near the Gulf towards Florida. But really overall, across the United States, that ridge pretty dominant, not a whole lot of flow going to be pretty uh, sunny in the morning okay not a whole lot of activity unless you're in those regions temperatures in the morning you know pretty cool 60s 70s pretty typical for the east half of the united states except for maybe the southern plains where it'll be pretty warm 80s and then cooler than average in the northwestern united states with temperatures in the 40s and 50s southwestern united states in the 60s and 70s and then also also 90s potentially even in Arizona here's the relative humidity in the morning typically a little bit higher in the morning but uh, temperatures will be cooler so the heat indices won't be terrible but you can see uh, very moy uh, very uh, humid here in the northeast half two-thirds of the United States and uh, that will uh, mix out just a little bit as we get later into the day this is 4 p.m. now on the fourth you can see this westerly flow kicking in to the northern plains now this is a little wave here and with that wave delivers a chance for storms in the dakotas and minnesota but also another wave out here in montana would refire another system of storms in montana potentially so there could be a couple of uh complexes that move through montana north dakota maybe in south dakota minnesota maybe even wisconsin northwest flow continues in the northeast united states but it is kind of weakening so it would not suspect anything crazy out there but maybe another shot of uh, some storms towards the afternoon popcorn storms will probably develop in the southeastern united states as well so here's your theta e's your frontal systems south of that mcs you can see an, a theta e bulge plenty of moisture and instability bulging into the dakotas and then another area right here in Montana with deep easterly starting to develop so I, I do think that you're going to see that the most likely area for storms is Going to be from Montana North Dakota into Minnesota with that particular look you can see more uh, Easterlies flowing up against the mountains more moisture and instability that's going to deliver another shot of storms from Colorado down into New Mexico and lots of moisture and instability just sitting out in the southeastern United States probably south of that line another chance for thunderstorms not terribly impressive in the northeast united states that might keep them dry as you can see 4 p.m here on the fourth there's your uh showers and thunderstorms in the southeast kind of that pop up little low pro weak low pressure very very weak low pressure system sitting out there and obviously your pop-up mountainous showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon during that peak heating in the rockies the southern rockies 
And you can see that complex here dying out in the Dakotas and Minnesota, but you could see some redevelopment here in South Dakota uh, and North Dakota as that peak heating, that theta E bulge, bulges to the north. And I wouldn't be surprised to see another area out here in Montana, very small area as well with the theta E. You know, the models don't always pick that stuff up, but the way that surface map looked, you could see another little area of thunderstorms right there. Here's your temperatures. Very, very warm on the 4th for some people, particularly Texas, hundreds and much of Texas, 90s. And then also uh, as you get into Arizona, but you know, they're used to it down there. Temperatures in the hundreds, maybe 110. Also a very warm area with that Theta E bulge in the South Dakota region, Nebraska, northern Nebraska, South Dakota. It could get close to 100 there. Temperatures in the 90s and 80s in the northwestern United States. For the east half of the United States, generally 80s, some 90s, particularly in the southeast portions of the United States. In the far northeast United States, pretty nice, 70s, maybe 80s with that northwest flow cooling the air coming down from Canada. So that's pretty nice for the northeast. Humidity, very humid in the northern plains. Kind of dry where he's had that 100 degree reading. So luckily the heat indices won't be terrible, but kind of moist, uh, kind of humid in the east half of the United States that will enhance heat indices, particularly in the southeast through the central plains where the hottest temperatures were, maybe by a few degrees, but nothing terrible. Maybe even northern Texas, eastern Texas is probably where the worst heat indices will be in the southeastern United States. And then as we head towards 10 p.m., this is when the 4th of July is happening, the, you know, the fireworks are going off, the jet is moving in, you see this piece of energy, the divergence in the upper levels, that will uh, be conductive for a complex of storms in Minnesota and the eastern Dakotas. Another wave right here with that Theta E bulge. I do forecast another uh, little MCS to develop somewhere in Montana here with that type of look, that little wave. There's still northwest flow in the northeast. We're going to have to watch that, but probably going to be mostly cool and dry. As you uh, look at the Theta E surface map here, it's not a whole lot going on in the northeastern United States. A little uh, bulge here. This would be your best chance along and north of that line right there from Montana into the Dakotas and parts of Minnesota. Deep easterlies going into those mountains. Not a whole lot of shear on the upper level, so no severe weather expected, but another batch of thunderstorms in the Rockies, Southern Rockies as well and then uh probably some more storms here in the southeastern united states along and south of the carolinas tennessee central arkansas region if you look at the reflectivity it looks pretty similar there you got a little complex in the dakotas minnesota even northern nebraska another one that develops in uh, montana so those are your two areas we're going to want to watch on the fourth of july as we're shooting off fireworks the most likely areas again montana central eastern montana into the dakotas part of Minnesota and then uh, potentially the Rockies I, I do think some of those storms will die out by the time the nightfall occurs but there could be a little bit of a complex still hanging around in northeast New Mexico southeast Colorado maybe in the Texas Oklahoma Panhandle and then a little bit of activity here in parts of Georgia through Alabama and Mississippi going to remain dry even though that there was some upper level lift there it's just it's mostly dry up in the northeastern united states it's going to be pretty nice out there cool you know and and generally dry so that's that and then temperatures around 10 p.m you can see cool off just a little bit more manageable except for the southeast into the south central into the southwestern united states where temperatures still could be in the 90s but the rest of the united states really averaging out across the entire country in the 80s and 70s around the time of shooting off fireworks except for maybe the central plains and the north southwestern united states and far southeastern united states where there could be 90s the northeast will be the coolest so will the northwest where temperatures will be in the 60s 70s maybe even close to 80 but very very nice temperatures in those areas the relative humidity will uh, spike up a little bit in the evening but that's typical Worst temp or the worst uh, heat indices will probably be in the Dakotas into Nebraska. 
with those overlays of warm temperatures and humid conditions. So that would be the most likely area and also the southeast. So it could be a little bit of humid, muggy in those regions. Temperature anomalies for the around 7 p.m. here on, on the 4th of July, you can see above average temperatures for the plains. This area would be indicating thunderstorms, but I do believe that before those thunderstorms occur, you'll typically be a little bit above average, five degrees or so. Northern plains, maybe a little bit more than that. Cooler than average in the northwest, a few degrees below average. Then a few degrees above average in the northeastern United States. But again, it's still going to be very nice for that region. I, I do think that you'll see a little bit below average temperatures there, even though that's what this model is saying with that northwest flow. So just very, very nice out there. Precipital water anomalies, this is how, uh, is it going to be more humid than average or less? You can see that the main core here in the plains, southeastern United States into the north, northern parts of the United States, above average moisture kind of hanging around, around there, drier than average in the southwestern United States and the midwestern region. Heat indices around 7 p.m. You can see uh, hundreds in the Dakotas. That's where it's going to be the worst. And then also in Texas and Louisiana and then the southwestern United States. That's where the worst of the worst is going to be where temperatures could be or the heat indices could be 100 plus. Precipitation amounts through the third and the fourth. This is how much it's going to tally up. You could see up to an inch or so in the Dakotas, half an inch or so in Montana. The Rockies, the east half of the Rockies into the plains, the high plains, you could do, see you know up to a half inch or so. A couple areas, maybe a little bit more where there's heavier thunder shower act activity. And then also the southeastern United States could be dealing with uh, an inch or so of rain. And then the, the northeastern United States, this is mostly for the third before that wave kind of dies out. But there could be quarter inch, half inch of rain up there as well. So the most likely areas to receive precipitation, again, Montana, South Dakota, North Dakota, or North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, Northern Nebraska, Eastern Colorado, Eastern New Mexico, and then uh, Alabama, or uh, that would be uh, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, Georgia, Florida, potentially, and then uh, Again, this would be on the third. Uh, these areas would be on the fourth. So that's your most uh, likely areas. Most areas are remaining pretty dry. Nothing crazy across the United States right now. So should be good for a lot of people to have a nice 4th of July. So hope you enjoyed this video. Share this to the friend. Comment below. Have you ever had a crazy 4th of July storm? And uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a great holiday, and we'll see you soon.